Hello, this is a chapter 4 video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking um, at uh, how we can represent our tracks um, within our music organizer and whether um, string objects do enough or whether we need to create some kind of track object. Um, then we're going to have an external view of Music Organizer version 5 and go through exactly what happens in that application. So this is our current setup which we're currently using in the previous Music Organizers. Um, we've got our Music Organizer um, object there um, and we've got the two fields, the files and the player. Um, so the files, remember, is an array list of type string. An array list of type string can store string objects. So what we've said is we're uh, going to represent our tracks and say that they are um, string objects. So we'll have a number of um, um, file names and those, those effectively get saved as our tracks. But effectively those are just objects which are saved um, within um, our array list. So one of the limitations of using strings to save tracks, have a little think, uh, pause the video and then come back to me in a moment. Um, so there's a number of limitations of um, using strings to save tracks. Um, as you know from using your media player um, or your iPods, then there's lots of information about each track. Um, things like artist, title and file name are an example of some extra fields used within, our, uh, within tracks today. Um, so what we could do is we could develop um, an object which will, just, which will store those um, pieces of information. So we might come up with something like this. This is an object diagram again um, where it shows um, the three different things which we need to capture, artist, title and file name, and we're going to store those as type string objects. So we've got our track object which draws three fields um, of string objects and you can see those, um, you can see those string objects there. What we'll need to do then is we'll need to have a place to store our um, track object and uh, the best place to store our track objects will be an array list of type track. So remember that array list will then store um, all objects of um, um, type track. Um, when you look in the Music Organizer version 5 you'll see that it's got a couple of other fields which we're going to look at later on in the video which is the music player and the track reader type fields. So this is what it is kind of going to look like um, from an object perspective. Um, we've got our um, Music Organizer version 5 um, and uh, we've got our Tracks field which is an array list of type track. Um, there's our um, object there which represents um, uh, our Tracks array list. And in our Tracks array list you're going to have a number of different track objects stored. Um, it's got three objects in this particular array list but I've just shown two of the objects here. So I've got um, a, a track object there which is stored um, and then in that you'll get all the, um, the track fields that you'll expect and then that leads onto those objects as well. Um, here we've got another track which is exactly the same type, however this um, particular track will have different information about its artist, title and file name etc. So that's basically what we need to create in Music Organizer version 5, that, that is what's created in Organizer version 5 so we'll have a look at that in a second. Before we do that, I want you to go ahead and open up um, the Organizer version 5 and just have a look through the, um, the classes, um, the methods um, and how it all works. Look from an external perspective just to see if you can work it out. If you can work it all out then you don't need to look at the rest of this video. If you are, want to have a quick insight um, then, uh, then carry on. So hopefully you've had a chance to pause and have a look at the video yourself. Um, so let's have a look at it um, on the video now. Let's reset the Java Virtual Machine. Um, so we'll see here that we've got uh, a couple of new classes which you haven't seen before. That's the Track Reader class and the Track class. So let's have a look at the Track class first. Remember we needed to store the, the title, the artist uh, and the file name in here. So let's have a look at that. Remember we'll have an external view first. So here we've got um, two constructors. Um, one constructor um, will take it um, in a string file name and the other constructor takes in three strings, um, an artist, a title and a file name. Remember to overload constructors, that is have more than one constructor, we need to have different um, parameter lists. So in this case here we've got one constructor has got a single parameter and the other constructor has got three parameters. That's what means, uh, that means we can have multiple constructors. So what we can do is we can go in and we can create a, um, a track um, and then we can stick in the name of the artist and the title and the file name. 
and that will then create our file name. I'm not going to do that though. Just wanted to show you that that's that's the idea of that. Um, we can just go in and create a single one with a single track name. Now, the next class we've got is the track reader class. Now, the track reader class is a clever little class. I want you to abstract yourself away from the workings of it at the moment, because all this track does is it will read a specific folder, um, and then it will return the music files in that folder, and we'll do some other clever little bits behind the scenes. So let's have a look at this first. First of all, I just want to show you the folder which I'm working to. So if you look in your chapter four of your projects um, in um, in your software software engineering in your um, Blue Jay um, folder, you'll see that you've got your music organizer version five. If you go into there, you'll see that you've got an audio folder. In there, you've got these four different um, tracks. Now, the way that um, this particular application works is it says, right, take the file name um, and use the whole file name to represent the file name. Uh, take the first part of it, so everything before this hyphen, and have that as the artist. And then take everything after this hyphen and have that as the, um, the name the track, so the title of the track. And so that's how it works out what the file name, the artist. Um, and the title of the track is so that's that's how that works now track reader does all that underneath um, the surface so you don't need to worry about how that works it just does it just works so just abstract yourself away from that let's have a go um, so don't get any parameters so a single constructor which is new track reader um, and then we have a single method which returns an array list of type track um, and then it's uh, the name of the method is called read track. So this will return an array list um, of type track with a list of the tracks in it, um, which will contain all the tracks. So what we do is we'll need to stick in the name of the folder. As this is a relative folder, we only need to put the local name there, so um, audio, um, and then we need to put in a suffix, suffix which is .mp3 for us. Okay, that. Um, and then it returns that array list of that type. So double click on that um, um, return and then it will return our array list object. So this is an array list object and the an array list will contain three fields. Um, the element data, which has got all the tracks in it, the size, which you've used previously, um, and the mod count, which uh, you haven't used before. So when we go into the um, the um, the object there, into the fields there, we'll see that we've got four of these objects, which have been created four object references. So we can go in and look into each of those, and we can say that this is a, a track object which has been created with our asset title and our file file name, and on and so forth. So that's a handy little class, the track reader class, that will search a folder, um, and provided that the tracks are put together in a certain way, i.e. with the hyphen, then we can extract the track title and the artist information about that. Good. The player class is the same as before, um, where we've got um, just the play sample, start playing and stop, so that hasn't changed anything. Um, let's have a look, however, at the music organizer class, which has changed. When we run the music organizer class, we'll see that music guys, the music library loaded. Uh, so it's it's um, somewhere in the class. It's it's done a little bit of work already. It's actually loaded our tracks. Um, we've got a few methods here. Um, add file at the top, where you can just provide a string file name um, to um, create an actual track. Um, add track here is if you've got a track already created, you can see here it's got a, um, a, a track type here, so you'd need to create a track before you actually were able to add that. In fact, I will do that now so you can see what's happening there. So with our um, um, file name, you've done it before where you've added a, um, a, a track via file name, whereas with the track you need to add a track. So let's just add that track. So I'm going to call this track um, Elvis. Um, I'm going to call it blue suede shoes, um, and then add that there. So now, to add a track, I need a track. Um, I need a track parameter. So the, the parameter type I need in there is track. So what I can do, BlueJ makes this very easy. You can double click track there, and then actually single. Single click does it, so you add track, C 
single to, um, single um, click on the object, and that will add that object into there. So now, if we do a list all tracks, we can see that we've got my new track added in there as well. Okay. So um, that's the first two methods done. Um, second, me uh, third method, um, number of tracks you've done, before, you've seen before. List all tracks you've seen before with a for each. Um, here we've got list by artist where it needs a string parameter. Um, artist, and we can uh, find all the uh, art, um, all the tracks which have got that artist. Uh, and then we can list a specific track by a specific index. The play first will play the um, the first um, track from the library um, first. Um, then we can specify using the play track. Uh, method which one we want to play using its index. Uh, we can then remove a track specifying its index and then we can stop the whole thing playing as well. So um, the main new thing here which you've learned is this uh, this new method here takes a different type. Normally we've been giving int types and um, string types but this one takes a track type. Um, obviously if you want to add a track we need to be of the correct type. Okay um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, we will talk more about this in the lesson. See you then.